Well, hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. As you can see, that hornet's nest that I saved up there that fell out of a tree last year, I had an idea that I had seen on YouTube and I hung it on the front porch and do you know that this year I haven't seen any carpenter bees whatsoever flying around the front of the cabin here? I've seen some on the sides and some on the back but I haven't seen any on the front because I heard that their natural enemy is like another bee of the same sort and the hornets and that if you took a paper bag and watered it up and just kind of taped it on the side of the house that they would hover from afar uh, seeing that and not come near it. So I decided to go ahead and put that hornet's nest up there and sure enough that is working. I don't know about the paper bag but I've got other buildings that I'm going to try it on. To see if it's going to work on anything else that I've got up here since everything that I have pretty much has a pine wood siding. So we're going to go down here and look at the trees that I fell in one of the recent videos. Now, taking a look at that, that's pretty good size, isn't it? It actually measures 32 across um, in one direction, and that's too big to fit on my sawmill. But that's how the tree started out, and then it forked about 12 feet up. So it looks like I've got two logs that are, I don't know, maybe uh, 35, one of them, the other one might be 45 feet long. Uh, that's going to be a lot of wood out of that one. Now we'll run and take a look at the other one. That's a pretty good sized log there too. It actually measures 27 inches across. And it goes quite a ways until it started branching out into small tops. So just by looking at it, it looks like there's about uh, maybe 40 feet of this one. So that'll make several logs. So it looks like I'm not going to be running out of wood anytime soon. But the problem is getting these out of here. How do I do that? Well, that how is made possible by Vivor. I would like to thank them for sponsoring this video and reaching out to us again, asking us if they could help us out with anything here on the homestead. What I have in here is a brand new system for hauling logs. Now I'm just teasing. That's just the top part right here and this thing weighs probably i don't know 40 pounds maybe uh, the book was actually stuck when i tried to open it i ripped the page anyway this is a set of grapples it's what they look like this is how they work they go around the log they hook into the log and then you pull it this part up here we'll have to put this together goes up top and then this head is able to swivel which gives you um, the ability not to twist and, and uh, kink up your chain or your cable whatever it is that you're using to pull this way anyway uh, let me get some tools we'll get this put together well now we're putting all these nuts on the bolts and we'll tighten them up this should help out a whole lot I'm dragging those logs out of the woods just to make it a little bit easier. You know, I do have cables that I use, but this will actually make it just a little bit easier, especially if I can't get the cable under the log to pull it very easily. This just grabs the side of the log and runs with it. friends well this is what I ended up with right here I want to I've only got one big hook I want to get another one for this area right here because if the log was really really heavy getting closer to the tractor is going to help because I won't have a boom extended so long um, but I've got a four foot chain a 20 and a 10 I think I'm going to get a two for this right here just to drop it a little bit more and then this right here if I had a hook here it almost touches the ground there but 
the only thing my trailer hitch is really close but if I left a little bit of slack I could actually be closer and actually pull from behind instead of primarily just lifting up but uh, yeah this is going to be great because this will actually go around the log hook into it as I lift up these actually pull in they act like scissors and uh, be able to drag that log out of the woods with no problem so thanks again to Vivor for sponsoring this video and sending us this nice grapple which will help out a whole lot in doing what we need to do up here on the homestead now we're going to walk down there and take a look at what we've been doing on the workshop. <clears throat> well, as you can tell, we've got the beam up. I got the braces in. And what I did, the, the reason that I put a top and bottom plate was so that my braces would have kind of like a mortise to fit into. And they actually push against the one that I've got in the middle. Um, as it pushes down it pushes in on that and then transfers that weight to the post which it can't go anywhere but we got it marked out wrong up there have you ever done anything like that so i actually had to cut this side of it and move it this way six inches because when i made my mark instead of going forward i went behind and that just messed it all up so yeah i've got um i've got it fixed where it works up there so i'll dress that up a little bit and you won't be able to tell it but uh, we've got the beam up in place and we were really happy with how the beam turned out and um, uh, the fact that it actually supported itself up there even without those braces but that's just going to help because once I get those two by sixes up there set and start putting sheathing down on top that's going to add weight and then the metal which is not a whole lot of weight but um, I think it's going to support it just great. Um, but I wanted to build it like it was going to have a lot of weight on it just in case. Uh, but that's, I think, that's all the heavy-duty framework. Now, what comes next is I'm going to be cutting some sheathing. Like with uh, this one log, the one in the back is an oak. And I'm saving it for probably furniture. Um, but this is the pine in front. And then the ones that I showed you earlier that I'm going to be... Uh, logging out uh, we finally got all the trees cut thank goodness the weather held out till I could get those down and they didn't damage anything I've got to get those logged out of there so that I can finish the uh, siding the sheathing for the top the sheathing for the floor on the outside I don't mind if it um, shrinks a little bit and I get a crack in it because it's going to be used for drying lumber anyway but the workshop in there I'm probably going to go ahead and put plywood down on a subfloor that I put in there so that um, you know I won't have any dust especially if I did get, just put the sheathing up top on the second floor dust wouldn't be falling through the cracks as things as the wood shrunk you know so I'll probably go ahead and put plywood in there as well but I need to put a subfloor in that way I can use thinner plywood uh, because that upper portion is just going to be a storage area anyway. But I've also decided that what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go ahead and take this first section right here and just add it to the workshop. I was going to put a door right there, uh, but I think what I'm going to do is add a door right here to be able to come out. Um, this right here will be a wall between me and the sawmill all the way to the top with the exception of a three foot sliding door right here where I can bring lumber in and stack it up. Now, the lumber that I'm gonna be stacking up in here is not anything at any great, great, great length because if I needed to do that, I could always store it underneath here, right? Um, but I'll be able to store, you know, like eight footers on this side probably and 12s on this side. Um, I'll also have area that I can store things up on top since I put uh, these braces up there you know, it'd just be a little bit difficult to get it up there, but it could be a storage area. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, from here down, I'm looking at probably around 16, you know, by 9. Uh, that should store a lot of lumber, especially if I store it vertically. And uh, I also have a storage area up over that section right there. I would just have to make that 2 by 6 that we kind of scabbed on the end permanent um, to be able to have something to set them on over on that side right there. Uh, so that would be uh, a good 
area again for storage. So like I was saying, when I cut the two by tens, I'm probably just going to put in, uh, use the sheathing to make a floor from here out, since this is gonna breathe anyway, and it's just drying lumber. And then from here in, I'll do the subfloor with plywood on top. That way um, I can stay warm in the winter time. The other thing too is I've got that pot belly stove that we're gonna have to work on, right? So probably put it right here. So what that would do for me is this part in here right now is 12 foot wide, 18 foot in depth. This would give me eight foot by nine foot to add to that. Um, good area, like I said, for the heater. Then I could have, you know, tools and whatnot right here on this wall as well. And like I said, maybe even a storage area up above and then my tools going around the wall on the inside. So the new timber frame saw horses, I'm thinking I'm gonna set them right here, right beside where the sawmill is gonna sit. Um, that way I can pull them out on the front right here. I can be able to use them. They should go right in there with no problem. And I'll have all of my woodworking uh, pretty much down here. We're gonna be getting solar hopefully sometime this year. And I think right where I've got all of these raised bed gardens, I need to uh, move this down the hill and put the array right here because it will be able to capture uh, the sunlight uh, winter or summer right here and I should be able to get it from you know 10 o'clock to, to 3 o'clock 4 o'clock somewhere in that neighborhood uh, whether it's winter or summer so this is going to be a good spot for uh, the array and then have the garden behind it although I could possibly put the array downhill just a little bit farther but anyway this area right here is going to have to change just a little bit due to the fact of the expansion here of the homestead but there's still quite a bit of work to do to that workshop down there to get it to where <laughs> i can actually use all the parts i've just been trying to get the main frame done and the roof put on it you know when you timber frame you basically take twice as long maybe even more because of everything that you have to do but i'll tell you what it's nice to have that beast of a workshop sitting down there because I know that it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, it's built very heavy duty. Anyway friends, again thanks to Vivor for the grapple. We certainly do appreciate you sponsoring this video. Thank to you guys for tuning in. We certainly do appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.